All right, hello everyone. This is Jack Bosch speaking, and welcome to another one of the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Podcast. I'm super excited. As you guys know, we are cash flow people. We talk about cash flow. We talk about how to flip land for cash flow, how to invest in apartment complexes, things like that. And I am bringing to you today one of the masters of multifamily investing, Mr. Rod Cleef. Now, before I introduce Rod, uh, as always, we got to make sure you leave us, if you like this episode, so leave us a five-star review. Not only press the button, but go into, uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, go in, put a little blurb in there, write something, what you particularly enjoyed about this episode, and then uh, that helps us spread the word. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you uh, like, to do the thumbs up, ask a question below. We'll make sure that we pass that question on to our guests and the questions are being answered. So with that, let's get started. Welcome to the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Investing Podcast with your hosts, Jack and Michelle Bosch. Together, let's uncover the secrets to building true wealth through real estate and living a purpose-driven life. All right, everyone. Hello. Now, uh, I already indicated it. We have a good friend of mine on the line, Mr. Rod Cleave. Rod, how are you? Oh, awesome, brother. Awesome. And let me just add to your little note about the reviews. If you don't like this segment, then for God's sakes, don't say a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. If you don't like it, but I'm pretty darn sure you will like it because our guest, Rod, is well, uh, not only does he have one of the top podcasts in the country on multifamily investing, he has also gone through a roller coaster of investing experience, come out ahead again, is doing ma ma large multifamily deals. And we're going to talk about the combination of, of multifamily as well as about what it takes to actually get from the get to the top on what it takes to when you come down from the top to get back up to the top. So uh, with that, uh, Rod, welcome to the show. And uh, Thanks, brother. This is going to be a lot of fun. I am super excited. So uh, go ahead. tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so... Yeah, you you went right to you went right to the pain in your intro, but let me let me give a little pre-frame for that pain. So I immigrated to this country like you did, uh, and I immigrated when I was six years old with my brother's Vancha and my my mother. Uh, I mean, my brother Albert, my mother's Vancha, and um, didn't speak English. Got thrown into school. Uh, we um, we didn't have very much money. You know, I had to wear clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army, hand-me-down clothes uh, through junior high school. And we ate expired food, drank powdered milk, because that's all we could afford. But, you know, I knew I wanted more. I know, I know some people had it harder than we did. Probably a lot of people did. But I, I knew I wanted more. So, you know, what was, what was interesting was I watched my mom's incredible work ethic. And she babysat kids so we'd have enough money to eat. And with her babysitting money, she bought the house across the street from us for $30,000. She was a real entrepreneur at heart. And that was when I was 14. When I was 17, she told me it had gone up $20,000 in her sleep. And I'm like, what? I'm getting into real estate. I'm going to make a fortune in real estate. I made a decision. And so, my first year in real estate, I got my broker's license. So, you could actually do it with education back then. You didn't need experience like you do now. So, right when I turned 18, I was a broker. And my first year, I maybe made $8,000. My second year, maybe $10,000. But my third year, I made over $100,000. So, what happened between year two and year three? Well, Basically, what happened is I got, I got an education about the psychology of success, how that truly 80% of your success or even 90% of your success in anything is mindset and psychology. You know, you have to actually take action with what you, talk, you and I both talk about on our podcasts, uh, the real estate knowledge. You have to, you have to, you know, get, you have to get push through fear and push through limiting beliefs and, and in some cases get uncomfortable to build that life of your dreams. And, and so, you know, that's what happened between year two and year three. I met this guy that taught me about that. And, and so, you know, fast forward to today, I've, I've owned over 2,000 houses and multiple apartment complexes so far in my career. Um, in 2006, my net worth went up $17 million while I slept. Wow. Just a little more in my mom's 20,000. And I thought I was a real estate god. You know, I, I, I could barely fit my head through a door. I thought, you know, I could do no wrong. And, and you know how that when that happens, God or the universe or whatever you believe will give you a smackdown. Well, that was 2008 for me. And 2008, I call them seminars. I don't call them failures because they're only a failure if you, if you don't get back up. But I had a $50 million seminar. And 
you know, I thought I was set for life uh, and, and I truly lost it all. And so, you know, so how did I recover from that? Because I, you know, I thought 80 million baby boomers getting old and getting cold, Florida was going to be recession proof. But before we jump into that, uh, yeah. before we jump into that, Rod, so, so you, what were you invested in at the time that made a $50 million impact? Yeah. So, or the reason, 17, the, yeah, 50, you want wow. some deep, yeah, you want some detail. I'll give you some detail. The reason I crashed and burned was I had 800 houses and the 800 houses were two hours north of me and two hours south of me and everywhere in between. Very logistically difficult to manage. Um, that was, that was the biggest issue. Okay. Now in Florida here, we don't have state income tax. So taxes are much higher. Uh, we also don't have, uh, we also, my properties, a lot of them were, uh, you know, along the coast, they're all along the coast. So I've got wind insurance, I got flood insurance. So all of that impacts cash flow. Right. And again, my focus was was net worth. It wasn't cash flow. And and you know, I wrote a book about this. The subtitle of which is the new rules of real estate investing, i.e., the new rules are focus on cash flow. But so I had these houses and to give you an idea, if I had a maintenance issue at one of my apartment complexes, you know, we would have stockpiled parts there. So if somebody, you know, if there was a plumbing issue or something like that, we'd have parts for the faucets and things. And, and somebody could go in there, maintenance guy could go in there and fix it and be done in and out in an hour, easy. Well, if somebody goes to one of my houses and it's an hour drive just to get there, for example, sometimes longer, then they have to figure out what's wrong. And every house is different. The mechanical's different. The, 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 everything's different. The plumbing, the electrical, everything's different. And so the appliances, everything. And so they, go, they have to go see what's wrong. Then they have to go find a Lowe's or a Home Depot and, and go buy the parts. And then they come back and that might take another hour. And then, you know, as if, if you've ever done any maintenance or remodel yourself, you know that you never, you, you always forget something. So you got to go back and get something else. And what takes an hour, 30 minutes to an hour in an apartment complex took all day at one of my houses. And you multiply that times 800. And then you, then, you know, the fact I was in a lot of, uh, you know, CC minus properties, working class houses, a lot of construction people in my houses, retail people in retail, and those people got crushed here in Florida. So, you know, my vacancies went through the roof, people were moving in together, people weren't paying rent, it was just the perfect storm. And, you know, uh, and what's crazy is in 2007, I was at a 30% loan to value. I only owed 30 cents on every dollar and I, st and, and I actually went upside down. So it wow. dropped more than 70%, my portfolio. So, you know, it was a painful, it was, it was a bad day. I've had worse days, but it was a bad day. Um, so that's what happened. But, you know, if you'd like, I can share with your listeners what I, what I did to recover from that. Yeah, let's jump into that. Let's talk about that. But uh, so, so um, yes, yeah, so let's talk about that. I, All right. Okay. Yeah, no, my pleasure. I, I, I okay. you know, I, I do this really what it is, it's knowing exactly what you want and exactly why you want it. So I do this, this goal setting workshop uh, with my coaching students and at my live events. And basically, I, I'll just give you an overview. But if you guys are listening, take some notes. I think you'll really appreciate this. It's a very, very valuable exercise. So what you do is is you pick an hour when you have a lot of energy, okay? And so don't do it right after a meal. Make sure you're well hydrated. You've drank a lot of water. And you sit down and you write down everything you could ever possibly want in life, okay? So, so it's not just the financial goals. Yes, it's the financial goals. How much money do you want in the bank? How much cash flow do you want from your real estate? Um, you know, the stuff, the houses, the boats, the cars, the jet skis, the planes, whatever it is. And, and by the way, take the lid off your brain. Imagine that if you write it down, you're going to get it because I'm going to tell you that is not outside the realm of reality. You know, um, when I, when I uh, lived in Denver, I knew I always wanted to live on the beach and, you know, and there's no beach in Denver. And so, uh, but, I, but I had pictures of palm trees and pictures of the beach and, 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 and I ultimately built this incredible mansion on the beach. It was unthinkable when I was 18 years old, but I made it happen. So, so take the lid off your brain. Imagine if you write it down, you'll get it. So then keep, keep writing. And if you're analytical, don't stop and analyze your, your answers. Just keep writing. You can always scratch it out later. But once you can't think of another thing that you want, make sure you put your vacations in there and the thing and, and that, then write down the things you want to learn in your lifetime. Okay. So it's not just the stuff, write down what you want to learn. Say, you know, me, I'm going to learn how to fly a helicopter. That's on my bucket list. I'm also going to learn how to uh, play the drums. My wife, 
Beautiful Bride bought me a drum set. I don't even know what end of the stick to use yet, but it's over there. It's set up in one of my other buildings here, and, and I'm going to learn. So what do you want to learn? Maybe you want to learn a foreign language. Maybe you want to write a book. What do you want to do with your life? And then lastly, and most importantly, write down who you want to help. So, you know, uh, me, I bought my parents a house on, on, uh, on a canal here in Florida. I, uh, you know, bought them a car. Who do you want to do something for? So, it's everything you want to do, be, or have. It's not just the stuff. And then once you can't think of another thing, I want you to, it's not real and it's not a goal until it's measurable. So, first of all, make sure each one of those goals is actually clear, concise, and measurable. But then you've got to put a time limit on each goal. So, write down, and don't overthink this, just write a number by each goal as to how many years it's going to take you to achieve it. Put a 1, a 3, a 5, a 10, or, or even a 20. Remembering that as human beings, we will overestimate what we can accomplish in a year and massively underestimate what we can do in a decade. So, keep that in mind. Put a number by each goal. Then once you're done with that, there's just a couple more steps. I want you to pick your number one goal. I mean, this one, if you got this goal, you'd be like, oh my God, life is good. So, whatever that goal is. Now, if there's more than one, just pick one. It won't matter for what we're going to do next. Write it on another piece of paper. Then pick your top three one-year goals. Put those on another piece of paper. Now, this is where most people stop. In fact, most people don't even get this far. Most people spend more time planning a Christmas or a birthday party than they do designing their lives. So, by this point, you're already ahead of most of the population. But you've right. got to do a couple more things. You, you must write down why each one of those goals is an absolute must because the why will drive you, okay? And this is how I recovered from losing $50 million. This, this is how I got there in the first place, but this is how I'm back to the, to the you know, success that I enjoy today because I remembered what it was I wanted and more importantly, why I wanted it. So, write a paragraph for each goal because, so I can show my wife or husband what success looks like, so I can show my kids what success looks like, so I can do whatever I want, bring whoever I want, go wherever I want, whenever I want. Whatever it is for you, write it down. And then, um, once you've written down the positive reasons why, then put some pain in there if you don't achieve the goal. Because as human beings, we will do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. So, use that. So, put in there so I don't feel like a failure if you don't get the goal. So, that I don't, you know, feel like I, I failed and, and so, you know, I don't fail my family. Um, so, I don't live a life of regret. Make it painful. Use that. Because, guys, this is the fuel. This is the fuel that will get you to take action on your dreams. This is what will get you back up when you get your butt kicked. Because it's going to happen. Okay? And, and it always happens. You know, you're going to have setbacks. This is what gets you back up. If you're comfortable, you've got a comfortable job, this is going to cause you to get uncomfortable because that's where the life you want is. It's just on the other side of that comfort. So, you put the positive and negative pain in in there, uh, positive and negative reasons why. Now, now the last step, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the last step with some examples, okay, because I did this in my life and didn't realize what it was I was doing until I looked back on it. So, when I was 18, I got a four-door car because I was going to show houses. I was going to be a real estate broker. I was going to get rich selling houses. So, I got this bone ugly four-door Granada, ugliest thing you've ever seen, Ford Granada. And I, I worked with a guy that had a Corvette now, and he let me drive it. And that's a real critical piece, that experiential piece where you, you experience what it is you want. Like if you, if you want a certain type of house, go to an open house and walk around and feel it like you're there. But he let me drive this Corvette. So, this is before you could even spell internet. So, I went in a, in a magazine and I got a picture of a Corvette. I put it on the visor, taped it to the visor of this bone ugly Granada. Within a year, I had this gorgeous Corvette. Now, I want to give you a couple more examples and, and please understand, all I can do is share my experiences. Uh, because, uh, but it's going to sound, it may sound like I'm bragging, but I'm not because the examples I'm going to give you do not even interest me anymore. But so, this was back at the time when there was a TV show called Magnum P.I. And the actor's name was Tom Selleck. And Absolutely. Drove, I haven't watched that. I haven't watched right? that, comedy, that show. Yes. Right? So, so, he drove this gorgeous red Ferrari 308. I mean, and I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. So, I got a picture of that actual car out of a magazine and put it on the visor of my Corvette. Within a year or two, I had a, a Maserati look just like it. Gorgeous red, same thing. Now, last example. Um, I'm the guy 
that always wanted a Lamborghini. Okay. I got, the, I had the pictures of the, back then it was a Countach, Lamborghini Countach. I had the posters in my bedroom with the bikini girls and the soap and the, yeah, that was me. I, I yeah. And, and what's crazy is my son collected model cars of exotic cars. He loved cars like I did. And he collected models. He had a model of the exact same color and style Lamborghini that I ended up getting. Uh, and he used to tell me, he used to lay in bed visualizing me taking him to school in it. And, and it happened. It was just crazy. I wrecked it, but that's, you know, we won't go into that. But, but, but anyway, so. <laughs> we so, might be tempted to, but we won't. Now. Okay. Right, right. So, so the last point here is get pictures. Like I use a paper planner, okay? And I'm showing it to you here. I know you're on iTunes, but if anybody looks at your YouTube channel, they can see this thing. Now, in the back of this thing, I've got pictures that I've had for 20 years, okay? Wow. Now, they start with my gratitude pictures. There's pictures of my kids because everything starts from a place of gratitude. You've got to have a foundation of gratitude. So there's my gratitude pictures. Again, these have been in here 20 years. Now there's the houses that I've wanted. Okay. And I'll talk about that more in a second, but the pictures here look just like the houses that I've had. Okay. The, and then, you know, stupid shit. Like I had a couple hundred thousand dollars of the watches. I thought that was important. The Lamborghini before I ever got it. You know, the Rolls Royce, all this stuff that I got because I had pictures. So that's the last step, my friends. Get pictures of your goals. If you look around here in my office, you'll see pictures of the things that are important to me now because they freaking work, okay? I'll give right. you one more example. Jim Carrey, when he was flat broke, wrote himself a check for $10 million, and he put for services rendered in the memo, and that's how much he got for Dumb and Dumber. So don't underestimate the power well, of, of the organization. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with that more. So Michelle and I, we don't uh, carry around our pictures, but we went to a program called Lifebook, which is actually many years ago, uh, which, uh, which where we, you actually create a book about your life and you look like, and you create like five years into the future. Now we did that thing 2011 and we literally put it away. And I have to admit, you're supposed to update it every year. And I admit I did not do that. But a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I actually looked at it and almost virtually every single thing we had written down has actually come through. Isn't that crazy? It's, it's so it's crazy. Cool. I hear that time and time again. It happens. Yeah. It's happened to me. Same thing. I just showed you. I mean, you know, and, 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 and if you, and, and I'm going to add a couple quick things here uh, just because they're relevant. Um, that, that, what you do is you use these pictures to visualize, even if they're just on the wall. Go to Walgreens. Go on Google. Find some pictures that resonate with you associated with your goals. They don't have to be exact, but when you see them, you're like, ooh, man, that looks good. Go to Walgreens or CVS, get them blown up, put them on the wall like I've done here, and, and it's so cheap. And even after, after a while, you won't notice them, but they're in your subconscious. And I'm telling you that stuff works, guys, so trust it. Um, and, but let me give you one last, one last little thing here. So... I told you I, I, I wanted to live on the beach and I dreamt about it for 20 years. And like I, you know, I tell people God's delays are not God's denials. I mean, yeah, it took longer than I'd hoped, but you can absolutely maximize that process by doing what we're talking about here and, and doing it faster. Uh, when I look back on it, I realized what I was doing. But so I built this incredible 10,000 square foot, $8 million mansion on the beach, this testament to my ego to prove the world I was good enough, you know, and and I mean, it was magnificent. I had three stories, elevator, wine cellar. Um, I, I, had, I owned the beach on one side. I had my boat houses on the back side. It was called a Gulf to Bay. It was like a slice through an island. You know, I had, uh, I mean, I could go on and I had 80 feet of glass that was 10 feet high next, all butt together. It was like you were living on the bay and I could see the bay on one side and the beach on the other. And, but two months after I built this thing, I'm floating in the pool. And this is what I want to share with your listeners real quick. I'm floating in my pool at night. My family's inside. They're sleeping. This, it's warm water and there's palm tree. I bought these expensive palm trees that went out over the pool and pools in magazines. I mean, there's just incredible waterfall from the second floor into the pool, giant waterfall, just magnificent. I'm floating in this pool. It's changing colors because I put fiber optic lighting in it. And, and it's two months after I built it. And I'm looking up at this thing, this thing that I built to, like I said, to prove the world I was good enough. And I got depressed. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? How could I be depressed? I mean, I was really depressed. I'm like, you know, I've just achieved what's by society standards, this incredible milestone in success. And I'm feeling like crap. And so when I look back on it, I realized there were two things happening. And that's why I wanted to share with your listeners, Jack. Go ahead. Go ahead. One was, what's that? 
That's good stuff. Go. Yeah, yeah. Well, one, let me let me explain what happened because this could come up for you guys. Um, one was you should never achieve a big goal in your life without having other goals lined up because the goals aren't going to bring you the happiness. They're going to propel you and drive you, but the happiness is short lived. Happiness comes from progress and growth, and you Absolutely. must keep growing. Okay, that's why people regularly die after they retire. They think, you know, I'm going to achieve, achieve, achieve to be happy. The, the key here is you must happily achieve, okay? And you must continue to progress and grow. So that's the one lesson I got. But there was another that, big, there was another the big way, lesson. That's why you see, why you see Hollywood stars running their cars against trees after they win Oscars and stuff like that because exactly. what else is there to achieve, right? They exactly. Put up, there's the absolute. And actually very similar to you, uh, when we achieved all that we, well, when we achieved our, our initial set of goals uh we were we were just sitting around and they're looking at each other it's like what do we do now like what's, right it's like what's, what's now that's yeah. that's exactly the thought was going through my head what do i do now yeah and then and, ultimately and, our our training program came out of that because it's like well after nice. we have accomplished everything for us let's help others accomplish what they want to accomplish love it love it yeah. and and, and, and my, my next part of my message here is very similar okay because that year uh, I start. I bought a bunch of books. You know, I'm gonna get. You know, this is crazy. I'm getting back. So I got Zig Ziglar and you know Dale Carnegie and and I got a Tony Robbins book. And I got halfway through Tony's book and I'm like, man, I like this. So I went and saw Tony live. Mm -hmm. And and that's where you and I met. I mean, you and I are big right. fans of of him, obviously. And guys, by the way, if you're listening and you haven't seen him, go yeah. see him while he's still alive and talking. Give yourself that gift. I, I, we get nothing by saying that, but trust me, right. you want to see. Him. Go but, but, see it, Tony Robbins. Go. Don't even you don't even need need to take the expensive tickets. Take the cheapest. Just tickets. go. This guy has such an intensity that in the back row you still have the full experience. Exactly. Go. Just go. So there's go. that. But but so I went and I found out that he fed families for the holidays, and I'm like, man, that's really cool because up to that point I had been totally focused on Rod. It's me, 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 rod, 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 rod. How can I show them I'm good enough? That was, my, that was really the thought that was going through my head because, you know, I got picked on in school and all the stuff kids go through and, you know, didn't speak English and all that stuff. So I built this thing. How can I show them I'm good enough? And, and, and I realized it was totally focused on rod. So I, I was really inspired by what Tony does. He's now fed, God, I don't know, tens of millions of people, maybe even more than that. But I decided to feed five families. And this is back in, I don't know, 99 or 2000. And so I went to a church, got some names of people, that and I said, who really needs help? And I got five families, and we, my brother and I, we, we filled boxes with food. It was a lot of fun. We bought turkeys, and we delivered these to these families, and the third family changed my life. I go up to this house, and it was a shotgun house. It was just the crappiest thing. If you've ever seen one of these where you walk in th to the living room, you walk through the bedroom to get to the kitchen, which has the, the bathroom off of it. In this one bedroom row house or, or a shotgun, I used to call them, um, where, where, where's this lady with five kids. So she comes out, she sees the food, she starts crying. Her kids come out, they start crying. And, uh, and I start crying and, and I'm freaking hooked. And, uh, you know, it, it, I'm blessed to say now over the last 20 years, uh, we've fed 65,000 children here uh, in Sarasota and Bradenton. Thank you, brother. And, and we've done... I don't know, probably 20,000 backpacks filled with school supplies. We've done, and we do it for the, the holiday basket brigade. We did it first for Thanksgiving. Now we do it for Christmas. But we also have given, you know, probably 10,000 teddy bears to the local police departments for their officers to keep in cars. So when they encounter a child that's been traumatizing, the officer can bridge that gap with the child. And that has been my greatest gift because like Tony Robbins talks about, and he has a similar story. That's why he got started doing it. Um, and he talks about, the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. I was achieved, I had achieved, but I wasn't fulfilled. Now, I've interviewed on my podcast people that are mega wealthy. I mean, even a billionaire that wasn't happy. You could just tell. He was totally focused on himself. And so there's a big difference. You know, success isn't success without fulfillment. So that's what I want to tell your listeners. I don't, you don't have to do anything as grandiose as I've done, but you must give back in some fashion for that fulfillment. I don't care if you adopt one family for the holidays or help an elderly person, whatever it is, you must give back. So I, I, you know, I just want to even, leave that. And, and, even, and I haven't done what you have done so far, uh, but you can even start, in my mind, as doing it as part of even your business. Sure. So like, like, for example, I, I haven't done that yet. I want to talk to you separately about 
how to do that, where to start, where you get those backpacks because you get them really inexpensively and therefore you right. can spread right. more ha of them out happy there. Happy to help. I, and, I've, I've, I've and, helped and, others. Yeah. Yes, we talked about that in a prior meeting because I'm actually part of his, he has a, uh, Ralph has a mastermind on um, multifamily investing, which I'm part of because that's my grow own growth area, right? right? We've done three multifamily deals. They're doing very, very well. One we bought for 3.6. We're selling it for $9 million right now. So, nice. um, so there's, so we, we've paid our dues on this thing, but Rod is the master in that. We'll probably spend a few minutes on that. But sure. in the prior conversation, we talked about this, and I just it, it stuck with me. So the very first way that I've implemented this in a very small way is in the apartment complexes that we own, we now give school supplies to the kids. And, uh, and when, nice. when, when in the summer, when the school year starts, right? We just nice. make sure because we are class C property unit uh, properties where there's a lot of family, single moms and things like that. It's not low income housing. It's they're having jobs and everything, but, but they're still living paycheck to paycheck. So we're doing that where, uh, we missed the Christmas piece. I plainly just forgot about it. I mean, not about Christmas, but about doing something for the tenants on Christmas. But next Christmas, I have something lined up for them too. Not a full Turkey, but just a little something from us uh, yeah. to help them. And, yeah. and now that not only, is, not only helps them, but it actually is also good business in that sense, right? You bet. So, uh, but, so you can start that way, or you can start just by giving, go to the local church. I absolutely love that. So love your let, story. Let, so Let me add something. Let me sure. add something, guys. Whatever you want, give. If you want happiness, give happiness. You want love, give love. You want money, Give some of your time or some money. I promise you, you will get it back 10 to 100 fold. Happens yeah. every single time. It's a law yeah. of the universe. I will tell you, anything in this universe that does not contribute actually gets eliminated. It's a law. You must contribute beyond yourself. Give yourself that gift because, again, I know you want financial success if you're listening to my great friend Jack here, but I'm here to tell you, like he just told you, you know, that financial success without incorporating this piece is really not success. Yeah. And we do that mainly by, uh, but we have to do more domestically, but because so far we have, we have mainly our donations and helps have been to a school uh, for the poor in Honduras where Michelle's from, nice. uh, where the Swiss guy is doing just an ex exemplary, absolutely amazing job and has almost a thousand children in school now that, uh, that, are, that are growing up bilingual with a profession and to the best school in the district now. So mm -hmm. it's really, it sets them apart from everyone else. And, and it's, it's, it's an amazing job that he's doing there. But we have always been looking for something domestic. So we're, I'm excited to start in something like that. I'm also looking to start something local with like the, the youth in need here. Because what you just said, the message, the goal setting, some of these things are so crucial in in getting out of a slump, getting out of where you are right now, if, if where you are not is not where you're happening. It's not let, the why is more important than the goals. Let, let me add something. Let me add something. So, so I'm back. Okay, I, I have a, I, I, you know, I lost my wife over all this. I've got an, the most amazing, beautiful human being on the planet that I'm blessed to say I'm married to now. Beautiful inside and out, and. And I live in a compound that's spectacular. I have six buildings. I have a main guest house. I have, you know, a, a two bed. I mean, a main house. I've got a two bedroom guest house. I've got a media building. I've got a conference center. A giant exercise facility. Um, Jack, you've seen it. I mean, it's, it's spectacular. It's like a park. And and because God's got a sense of humor, I can see my old house across the bay. But but I'm back because because I focused on what I wanted and, and why I wanted it. I, I, sure, I hid under a rock for a few months, uh, but, but then, then I got picked myself up and said, screw this, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna focus on what I want. Because guys, it's so easy to focus on what you don't want. I could have focused on the pain I was going through and losing it all and, you know, and create a story around that. You know, people create stories as justifiers and, and to substantiate their lot in life and they're really just softeners, you know, that, that you know, why they're not where they wanna be. And, and so, you know, and focusing on what I wanted and why I wanted got me back to the success that I'm blessed to enjoy. To add to that, to add to that, what I really said, one of the very first things you said in our interview right now is, uh, is that you don't call them failures, you call them seminars, which is a very, very, very big distinction. I don't know if everyone got that. The fact that it's a seminar means that you learn from it. And so I would say in my events where we, by the way, we do a similar uh, goal setting and why exercise is... Uh, but I always say at my, my events that uh, when you have enough failures, you don't start from scratch. People say, like, I got to start from scratch. 
No, it's like playing baseball. If you have failures, you have learned, but you've become a better baseball player over time by all these failures. So next time around, you're starting on first, second, or third base already. You're ahead of everyone else because of what you learned. So Love I it. celebrate the people in our event for having failed. I ask them, who has failed before? And then we, we give them a round of applause because, because they, I don't want them to feel bad. You shouldn't be feeling bad about failing. Failing is part of the process, right? Like, yeah. like it all, uh, what is that? Mark Cuban says, business is awesome all because you can, you can hit and hit and hit and all you need is one success. That's right. You know, you and I met, you and I also met in the war room, which is a, a big digital marketer mastermind, best marketers on the planet. And I went to an event, I don't know if you were at this one, where Sarah Blakely, the billionaire owner of Spanx was there and I got to meet her and, and she told me something which was profound about failure. And she said that, and she started with $5,000 and she was on Forbes about five months ago. She is a billionaire with a B, uh, owns, you know, built Spanx into that. Well, she said that her father most evenings would ask her and her siblings, what have you failed at today? Is that a freaking awesome question to ask your kids? I love that. To make them not afraid of failure because we fail our way to success, guys. Everybody that's been a success has failed. I mean, I've owned, I've built 24 businesses. Several have been worth tens of millions of dollars. But most have been spectacular flaming seminars, okay? Yeah. So, Absolutely. you know, we fail yeah. our way to success. We have greater branches of our business that for sure no longer exist. And there's a reason why they no longer exist, right? right. Because they just didn't work out. And uh, it's exactly. So now, five minutes uh, just quickly on uh, multifamily. What are you sure. doing in this space right now? What are you focusing <laughs> on? And what do you think about where the market is heading in the next three to five years? Well, we're certainly we're at the top of a market cycle, no question. Okay, I mean, I, I can recognize it because I I fell underneath that wave in 2008. Now that said, there are still opportunities. We actually have almost 800 doors under contract in three complexes right now, but we had to kiss a lot of frogs to find those. Now the thing that I will tell you is, multifamily's fantastic business because it really requires little or no money. It's because it's a team sport. You put, the, you put a team together. In fact, I just did a Facebook Live post on this yesterday. You, you put a team together and you can, you can raise the money. You can find the experience and uh, all the things that you need to put a deal together, the liquidity, the net worth, the experience, all those components, you can put a team together to satisfy those. So that's the beautiful thing about commercial multifamily is they look at the team instead of the individual like they would in a residential finance situation. So- uh, what are we doing? Um, well, you know, I've got my courses and coaching, my live events. I've had four sold out live events. We've, you know, got another one coming up in Denver in May. So I, I love the training piece. That's also a piece of giving back for fulfillment. I know that's why you do it, Jack. I mean, we're both, you know, kindred spirits. We love to add value to people. I've got hundreds of thank you cards on a wall behind me here from people that have taken action. But, but we're actively buying as well. Like I said, we're, I'm going, in fact, I'm flying this afternoon to Shreveport to look at a 400 unit that we're raising money for right now. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're pulling the trigger on this one. It's done. I'm just taking another look at it. And, wow, and then on Monday, so. I'm going to Lexington for another deal we have under contract. So, so you know, it's a lot, but, but, you know, when you love what it is you do, work is play. And so those of you listening, you know, if you're thinking about land flipping with Jack or possibly multifamily, make sure you love it or learn to love it. Otherwise, don't do it because right. life's too freaking short. So if you don't love it yet, associate pleasure with pieces of it so you learn to love it because that's when life is magical. I mean, like I'm working seven days a week right now, but I'm loving it. So it's okay. You know, right. so that's, that's yeah. what I'm up to, you know, between, you know, my thought leadership platform, my podcast just hit 5 million downloads this week. Wow, major, so major crazy. milestone. Very, very cool. I, my videos got watched for 30,000 hours last year. I couldn't believe it when I saw that. That I mean, I'm just so, so blessed and, and like you and, and we're impacting so many lives. And, and um, you know, by the way, Jack, I, I've got a, a book on multifamily investing. I still give away for free. It's going on Amazon in May, but if your listeners want it, yeah, uh, they can have it. I was like, that, yeah, that just, was that just would have been my last question. That yeah. would be my last question right now. But actually, uh, one one question before we do that, I'll ask people. How, I'll ask you in a moment how people can get a hold of you. Sure. If you if you have that book, you'll share that sure. in a moment. Sure. Uh, just the last question is like in terms of in terms of again, we're looking at the a multifamily market. You have eight hundred units under contract right now. Uh, that's very exciting. And uh, what kind of markets are you focusing right now? Are you focusing on the primary, secondary, tertiary? and uh, ABC class, 
What kind of market? What secondary, kind of market? secondary and tertiary. Although one of our deals is in Dallas, we just got lucky okay. and fell into this deal. Uh, but okay. secondary and tertiary, and the other two. I mean, Lexington and Shreveport, and and um, always B or C properties that we can upgrade another a level. So so the Dallas one right. is a C, but it's in a B area, and we can make it a B. Um, and so, so we look for value add, just like, you know, you did your example, that incredible example you mentioned a minute ago, um, you know, where you, where you reposition the property, you go in, you fix up the units, you raise the rents. And that's the beautiful thing about, about real estate, multifamily commercial real estate is that any increase to the net income is an exponential increase to the value. I mean, it's staggering what you can do with a small rent increase. So, so that's why we love the business. I had investors ask me about investors who had no experience in multi in real estate at all. They usually own the stock market. Ask me, don't you think it's aggressive to assume that you're going to increase the value of the property by fifty percent over five years? It's like, no, it's conservative, because if we don't, if we add two hundred thousand dollars in income over the next five years, then we should be adding not three hundred thousand dollars. We should be adding not three million dollars. We should be adding more like three and a half or four million dollars to the value of that property based on the cap rate and so on. So. We have very conservatively estimate the value increase by that. But once I explain to them, they're like, oh, okay, I understand. But it's a mind shift from the stock sure. market. Over sure, to sure. Market. But I, I will say this. Those of you that are thinking of investing passively, make sure you check out the operators because there's a lot of mistakes being made right now. People aren't stress testing deals. What I mean by that is, you know, what happens when the market contracts and rents go down and vacancies go up? Make sure that your operator you know, understands that process and is doing a stress test on the deal because you don't want to invest in anything without, uh, with, with little knowledge. Don't, don't let someone have else, you know, uh, dictate your success or your hard earned money. So just be careful with that. Um, yeah. And I know uh, that you, I know you stress test your deals, Jack. We've talked oh, we about do. it. We, yeah. we actually underwrite them based on an almost worst case scenario. Right. And, and, and if we can get them with that, uh, that in mind at that price, and that's how we actually pitch it to our, to present it to our investors, because we're basically telling them, here is what we think we can do in a really worst, almost worst case scenario. Yeah. And uh, chances are we're going to beat this. So if, yeah. if you're okay with this return and, uh, and, and, and with this return, then, invest because we're most likely going to surprise you with a higher return. Yeah. We always under promise and over deliver as well. That's key. Whenever you're dealing with investors, if you, you know, decide to get into this business. Which, which sometimes makes raising funds a little challenging because sure. we've had people come and say like, well, I got these guys offering me a much higher return. And then I always go and say like, send me their underwriting. I'm going to start, I'm going to underwrite my deal the same way they do. And I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you what I would be able to promise if I underwrite it the same way. And the last time we did that, we offered a 15% annual, uh, annual return on our deal on average. And I, after I underwrote it like this competing deal that they were offered, being offered, we, we would have been able to offer a 37% return on the money. That's how conservative we're underwriting ours yep. that versus the other one, the other guys. The other guys have been so aggressive. And even with that, they could only return, uh, promise like a 20% return. That's, that's my whole it, point. That's my whole point. Apples, 37 versus 22, and then they put all the money with us because we might not reach 37, but we'll definitely probably reach. We well, think you, we you'll reach exceed 22. the other guy. You'll exceed yeah. the other guy. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to mention it because there are, you, you may have people that are, want to invest passively. Just be careful. Learn the business. By the way, well, let me go ahead and give me the no, green no, no. light and I'll, I'll give, I'll give the, your people a free resource to, that'll help them learn. Yeah. The so go ahead. So uh, Rob, uh, um, obviously you have... Um, you have a podcast, you have things. So how do we get people a hold of you? How they can hear more about what you do? And, sure. uh, and, and you mentioned that book. Tell us how long <laughs> you get that. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So, so yeah, I've got a free 200-page book. I mean, it's like a textbook for this business. And I'll give it to you for free. I'm, it's going on Amazon for 25 bucks in May. Uh, but, but if they text my name, Rod, to 41411, uh, we'll get you a free copy. So, so there's that. Um, you know, my website has tons of material on it, tons of free content, videos and articles that I've written or curated uh, that, that will really help you maximize this business. And it's rodcleef.com, K-H-L-E-I-F.com. And, you know, and, if, and, and I've got, if you're interested in multifamily, I've got a Facebook group that we're about to hit 25,000 people in there. And, you know, that, you just go to multifamilycommunity.com and it's a direct link. We have to approve you if you've got a bunch of, 
Bitcoin in your groups that you're in, you're not going to get in, but, but otherwise we'll let you in because we don't allow any promotion. But it's multifamilycommunity.com to get in there. And, and because remember, guys, you are the five people you hang around with. So you want to be around people that want more. You know, I, 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 Jack, you've got a group too, right? You've got a Facebook group? I do, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so you, you want to be around people that, that, that want this, that are going to hold you accountable, hold you to a higher standard, which is why Jack and I attend and, and host masterminds because, you know, it's so critical to be around people that, that want more, maybe even have more, um, and because and a rising tide lifts all ships. So, you know, that community is awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're interested in total immersion, I'd love to see you at one of my events. My next one is, is in Denver, May 17th, 18th, 19th. It's three days, just me teaching, nobody coming in from the outside to sell you stuff. Tickets are stupid cheap. I mean, they're so, so reasonable. So that's rodindenver.com is, is the next one. All right. Wonderful. So with that, thank you very much, Rod. I, 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 my I pleasure, love brother. Talking, since our, a lot of our students are interested a bit more in the land and so on than mm -hmm. the, the, perhaps multifamily, but I think we did a really good uh, strike in the middle of talking a little bit multifamily. But more than anything, I love hearing about your, about, I, I, I'm sorry you had the struggles, but I love hearing about the story, how you came back from the struggles, because literally, if you can lose, somebody can lose $50 million and come back from that, then anyone can out there can do the same thing. So that's why I dove into that. I want you to understand listening to this that, that you can also, wherever your struggles are, there's a future. I love the, I love the, the, the technique that Ron, Rod showed here on how to set your goals, set your whys, take those first steps, put the things out there uh, because they will give you the emotional juice and the energy to go out there and look at that. But then take action, go, go grab, learn, Listen to his podcast. Obviously, continue listening to ours and, and just, just take some action. Learn the method that you like the most and then go take action for that and learn to love what you do or, or find something that you love and then go out there and the future is yours. So with that, thank you very much, Rod. And uh, all, everyone, and you have a great, great day. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Enjoyed this episode? Then make sure you like, subscribe, and post your comments and questions below the video. We're looking forward to hearing from you.